Right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is find some mushrooms and ones that are actually fairly uh, decent specimens. So you'll see this one, this is pretty good. It's almost perfect. Whereas if you look at this, it's getting a bit old. Still very much identifiable, but it's just not a great specimen. This one, once again, you can ID it quite easily, but it's not the best specimen. It's got a massive chip out of it. It's also been broken off quite badly at the bottom. So, I'm going to go with this one. And the next thing you're going to want to do is work out a way to mount your mushroom. What I have is a fly tying vise here, um, and it's got two pins in it. And the reason I use two pins is so that the mushroom can't twist once I've mounted it. Um, so you're going to put it on in a couple of different orientations at a time. So let's start with it carefully like this. Okay, so it's mounted to the side and you'll see the reason for the pins is that I um, don't then have to try and clone out a background or anything. It's very easy to clone out pins. So now my setup here is, I've got a Canon RP, which is a full frame mirrorless camera. The lens is a Lauer 2x macro lens. Um, then I've got a trigger, wireless trigger for the flash on the top. Um, I've got a flash here, a Godox V860. Um, and that's mounted on a tripod, the camera's on a tripod. Um, and then I've got, it's a cheap Godox softbox. I think it's 20 centimeters by 30 centimeters or something like that. You can get them on take a lot or from uh, camera stuff. And yeah, that just seems to do the trick. Uh, the other thing that I've done here is that I've got the flash pointing straight down. Um, often for macro work, you'll have your flash on the camera. In fact, that's usually how you'll do it unless you're stacking. But in this case, I want a black background. And having the flash on the camera causes the light to go forwards and it will then reflect off the background. So with this diffuser and doing macro stuff, while you can get a black background um, with the flash on the camera, it's much easier if you've got the light moving vertically. Um, so my light source is at the top, but I'm going to bounce it back up as well. So you can think of it kind of as having two light sources both moving vertically, lighting the top and the bottom, but the background is going to stay fairly dark. Um, and I've left a lot of space in the background, and what that's ultimately going to do is create a um, entirely black background. Now what I'm going to do is, I've got the setup, I'm going to just get my framing correct, try and fill the frame with the mushroom here. Go to manual mode here. I've kept my lens on f2.8 because that will give me the best um, the the best quality focus. Um, I'll show you what I'm how I'm going to focus now. So I've got the lens on f2.8 and I've got um, exposure simulation off. So it will always look fully exposed, so it just means I have to get my lighting right. And I've punched in five times here. Punch in ten times. And I'm going to focus on the stipe. I'm going to make sure that the mushroom is parallel to the camera. I don't want it at any kind of angle. You're working with very shallow depths of field when it comes to macro photography. So I've now got it focused on the edge of the stipe at f2.8. I've punched in ten times. I can then zoom out again, and I'm going to take it to f11. Let's just, yeah, cool. So that's f11 there. Right, now I'm going to want my camera on two second timer. Um, not only because it will uh, allow me to get a very still shot, although that's not really an issue using a flash, but it also gives me time to get my piece of paper underneath the specimen. I've got my flash on manual. 
um, and I just play around with the, uh, the settings until I get the correct exposure. I don't like my flash thinking for me. Um, my camera syncs with the flash at 1 1 80th of a second. Uh, so I've got it at 1 1 80th, I've got it on ISO 100, two second timer, and I've got it on 5000 Kelvin. So now I'm going to press the shutter, hold the paper just underneath. There you'll see. Okay. Now it's obviously difficult to see a GoPro isn't the best thing for this, but you can see I've mostly got that well exposed, but the cap has a bit of a dark patch on it. You'll also notice that the mushroom is lit up nicely, but the background is completely black. So that's exactly what I'm going for. Let's see, if I punch in here, you'll see that stipe is perfectly sharp and it's a little soft on the edge of the cap but ultimately it'll be fine unless you're really blowing it up big so that looks good apart from the lighting so let's try that again um, just sort of play around with how bright the flash is and where you put your paper Maybe try and change the settings, make it slightly brighter. Put my paper as close as I can. See, that is definitely looking better. I'm going to make the flash slightly brighter. I can always, if I have to, merge some exposures of this mushroom. There we go. So you'll see on the GoPro footage, it does look like there are parts that are overexposed, but this is actually now perfectly exposed. So now I've just got to change the orientation of the mushroom. Right, so now I'm going to change the orientation of this mushroom, and I'm going to try and get the cap. All I'm going to do is attach it to the pins, just like that, with the cap facing the camera. And then it's the same process as before. Go to f2.8, punch in, focus perfectly at f2.8. Um, I like to focus basically on the tip of the cap and then just move in very slightly so it's almost focused on the tip of the cap. Um, and then move to F11 check that your exposure is good got a it's almost perfect but we've got a little bit of a hot spot on top obviously with the light mostly coming from the top it's not perfectly even it's not ideal I would love to have two identical flashes, one coming from underneath, one from the top, but I don't have that yet. There we go, that's good. So now I've got the cap. Now, what I would usually do is just turn the mushroom towards the camera um, and just have the stipe in the way of some of the gills, but I'm not going to do that today because I've actually got quite a few of these uh, mushrooms that are in fairly good shape. So today I'm going to rather take a cap off the stipe. This one is a bit old, but anyway, it will give an idea. Take a cap off the stipe and I'm going to put it there. You want the pins behind your gills. It's quite difficult to clone pins out of your actual gills. Um, Photoshop does allow you to do it but it's just it's unnecessary work I'll line up the camera nicely go back to f2.8 for your shallowest depth of field focus at f2.8 go back to f11 and it's the same process again okay it's dark. Let's try to get the paper under properly this time. Okay, 
It's still a bit dark. Very nice. Right, so I've got that one, and the last thing is we then need a cross section. Right, so now you're going to want your uh, cross section of the mushroom. And this requires you to be delicate, which kind of sucks because I shake a lot, especially after caffeine. What you want to find, you'll see the stipe is almost always bent. So you want to find the orientation where the stipe looks roughly straight. That looks about best, and you want to cut from there. This isn't perfectly straight, unfortunately, which is going to be difficult. Then you want a really sharp knife. A fillet, fish filleting knife is always good to have. Let's see. I'm going to try. Sorry, this won't be in focus or possibly even in frame. You want to be careful here. You don't want to dislodge the cap. You don't want to break anything. Okay, I haven't done the best job here, but it will definitely do. Um, so I haven't broken anything off, um, I've got all the way from the base to the center of the top and you're able to see the cross section of the gills and that's the main thing. Right, here I'm going to want to mount this fairly carefully. You don't want, oh there's some hairs on there because of the damn cat. Want to mount it in that slither of sliver of stipe that's left, preferably without pins showing. You want the pins entirely behind, and yet you still want it fairly straight. And you'll find with pins it keeps wanting to. There we go. That is pretty good. Now it's the same thing again, back at f2.8, and we punch in, well, it is focused pretty much perfectly already, that's always a nice surprise, again, cool, maybe frame up better, back to f11, And that is perfect. Right, so now we have all of the images that we need. Um, it's time to put them all together in Lightroom and then Photoshop. Right, so I have now imported these files. Um, you'll see there are a couple of copies and that's where I was getting the exposure right. So you can see that, uh, that's the dark patch I was talking about that was a bit underexposed. If we go to on, that's pretty much perfect. The highlights are slightly blown out here, but we might be able to bring those back. Otherwise we can always use this one to compensate. Might actually be able to use that one, this one by itself. Anyway, you can see, very nicely sharp. Um, these ones, let's have a look, that one's definitely the best, you'll see that one, that's blown out, that's not going to work. This one will work quite well. This is underexposed, you can see this is older than I would want, but uh, it gives you the idea for the theory. That one's better, that's very much usable. Ah, that is perfect. That edge might be slightly overexposed, but that's not the end of the world in this case. It's really not important here. And then there, only got one photo of that, and that is brilliant. 
perfect. So all of these have been taken with pretty much the same settings. Um, what I'm going to do is the ones I definitely won't use. Let me just rate. You press select a photo and press 1 and it will rate photos. So I'm going to take all the ones that are kind of usable uh, that I might use and I'm going to rate them one star. Then I'm going to go to filters and go to rated. And now I will select them all. You'll see here I've got this on auto sync. If it's not on auto sync, you can press that button and it'll go. So auto sync, it means whatever I do on this photo, it's going to sync the settings across all of the different photos, which is pretty cool. Um, in this case, the exposure looks pretty good. Um, let me actually go to this one. Let's take the highlights down here. Yeah, okay, I can actually bring those highlights down enough that I don't need to merge the other photo. Shadows up a bit. You don't want to take that too much because there might still be stuff in your background that will start coming through and you kind of you want your black your background to remain as black as possible because it makes your Photoshop editing a lot easier. Go to blacks, take that down a little bit. It should just make the dark areas pure black, and hopefully you don't have any very dark areas on the actual mushroom. Um, now with mushrooms, I usually like to take the texture up quite a bit. I'll take the clarity up a bit. Um, I'll have a look at the dehaze. Sometimes I'll touch it, sometimes not. In this case, there's a little bit of haze that comes from having the light going up and down rather than coming from the side of the camera. So I'll just, yeah, I've only taken that up to seven. And now what happens with uh, taking texture and clarity up is you do lose some color. So I'm going to take the vibrance up actually quite a lot, I find. And you'll see that just brings back some of the color. Um, I'll see, I might need to do the saturation, but I think those colors look pretty good. It's just a quick edit, it, it doesn't, you don't need much, you're not trying to do anything particularly special here. So now those settings have sort of synced across all of these. Some of them are going to need a little bit more attention, so this one, maybe I'll take the exposure up just slightly here. So you'll see I've now deselected all except this one. Take the exposure up there. Yeah, I'll take the exposure up very slightly here. And then definitely this one needs some exposure. And I think this one could also actually do with a bit of saturation, not overboard taken the saturation to 12 which is already quite high. You'll see there's a hair stuck here despite my best efforts I have cats and so you can't get rid of it but the hair I can remove in Photoshop. So now the ones we're going to use, we're going to use this one, I'm going to use that one, that one and that one. So I'm going to select those ones, hold down control and just click the ones you want to use then right click, edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop and now I'll just wait for it to open. Right, so now they're all open we need to get rid of this background. This background is almost black but it's not perfectly black and if you start putting these all together into one picture you're going to see edges and things. Um, so it's annoying but even though this looks clean um, it's just worth taking the time to get rid of the background entirely. So what I'm going to do, oh, let's go out of crop mode, I don't know why it automatically goes to crop. Anyway, select, you'll see my layer here is selected color range um, and then you select this background. I've got it on uh, sampled colors so you select the background. Now you'll see I've got the fuzziness on low so it's going to be quite precise in how it selects colors. You can change this 
so it's less precise but I prefer to keep it quite precise and then just sample from a few areas in the background so what I do is I click once in the background and then hold down shift and just drag this all over the background and if you see in that little picture down there slowly the gray bits disappear it's looking pretty good it's not perfect but you'll see so basically the white is going to be selected the black isn't um, so what you'll see here is we've actually selected the background. We'll change that just now to select the mushroom instead. So press OK. And you'll see these marching ants means, yeah, that's where it's selected. Now I'm going to go to mask. If you just, this button down here adds a mask. If you just press that, it's going to mask out your mushroom, not the background. Um, so, whoops. Let's delete that. You can either go Alt, hold down Alt and then press Mask. Oh, whoops. Just, it seems to have deselected. Let me do this again. Okay, it's got it saved, so I'll just press that again. Um, so now I'm going to hold down Alt and press Mask, and that will uh, basically invert it. Otherwise, what you can do, let me just go Control Z, is you can press the mask and it will select out the mushroom and then just go Control I and that also inverts it and that works really well. Now with your mask selected, find your paintbrush, uh, make the opacity 100%. I try, for what I'm doing here, all of the edges are pretty sharp, um, so I keep my hardness right up near 90 I'm going to have black selected because black is delete and I'm going to just get rid of these pins clean it up nicely just now okay now this still won't be perfect if you hold down alt and then press your layer mask area click that you'll see any of these white areas are still selected from the background so let's just paint over that it should be deleted entirely there might be some little white spots in the background you're going to want to get rid of those and then you'll see on your mushroom sometimes there's some black bits on the actual mushroom you don't want that so you can get rid of those it's usually soil and stuff it's I mean it's okay if you leave them, but I like to remove those entirely, then you'll see there's a hair here, so we can go back to black. White is basically unmask and black is mask, so painting black in areas I want deleted and white in areas I want to be visible. So that looks pretty good. Then you can just go back to this layer mask and press Alt again. Then what you've got is a mushroom. These little squares in the background means this is a um, clear background. So you've literally here just cut out the mushroom, which is great. Um, and I'm just going to crop this in, get rid of this extra space like that. Cool. Now I've got my first mushroom ready. So now I'm going to do the same to all of the rest of them. I'm going to turn off audio and just uh, speed this part up for you. Uh, but the process is exactly the same. Right, so now I've got all of these images on a clear background. 
deleted that black and I can put them all together and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this crop tool and extend one of them make a nice big template so I don't have to actually start a new template press, con uh, press control zero that should that'll fill up the screen nicely or fit it to your screen um, and then go to this one make sure it's selected control C Oh, whoops, control V. It seems not to like it. I do that anyway. I can do this all just now. Um, next one. Control C. Control V. And the final one. Okay, now let's extend this, make this a nice template to work with. Press the tick there. Okay, perfect. Now they are all on top of each other, and you'll see that down here they are separate layers. Um, so basically, they are in this order. If I move this one to the top, you'll see that one is now on the top. Um, select tool. Drag that one up there, drag that one down there, I'm going to move that there, and move that there. Now these are different sizes, which isn't ideal, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this one, press Ctrl T, which is transform, and I'm just going to move this down so it's roughly the same size as the other one. You want to make the bigger one smaller rather than the smaller one bigger because then you're going to uh, if you make the smaller one bigger you're going to lose resolution let's sort that out let's try this one control T you'll see it's in the wrong orientation so let's flip horizontal and then you right click to get here and then flip vertical there we go so now they are both in the same orientation now, you want to organize these, because they're on a clear background, you don't have edges that are overlapping the pictures and things, which is nice. Um, you want to get these nice and close, you're not wasting any space. Now, you can crop this template down to size like this. the tick up there. And now you're going to want to make a new layer so it's that little box down there. Is that you'll see it's come up in the middle here. You don't want that so you click hold and drag that to the bottom so that's now behind all of the others it's in the background. With that selected edit fill I've got you go to contents here it's already on black um, you can choose colors if you want for yeah any all kinds of things anyway I keep that on black mode normal opacity a hundred percent press OK boom you've got a sorted you've got a fantastic um, image now and this is perfectly black um, this background so yeah now what I'll just do is press Control s um, so because this is on one of the layers that I opened from Lightroom, when I go back into Lightroom, you'll see the TIFF that it's made um, a copy of will come up in Lightroom, and I can then play around with this in Lightroom, and I'll export it from Lightroom because I've got all my settings sorted. And if you go check, you can zoom right in here, and you can see all the detail I've still got here because each of these images is still in their full size. So look at this, I mean, this is probably in the region of 60 megapixels now that I've put it all together. So yeah, got endless resolution to work with if you want to. Yeah, so that is how it's done. I'm going to export this to cool, my mushrooms folder.
Right, and that is start to finish how you make these mushroom photos. It's pretty cool.